Hi, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert. I'm taking a look at FabFilter Twin 2. It's not necessarily brand new, but what it is is one of the first AAX synths to be available. And for Pro Tools users, that's important because when we go towards Pro Tools 11 or whatever it's going to be called, or a 64-bit version, we know that AAX plugins are required for it to work. So as composers, we need to make sure that we have our synths ported across so I'm showing you this for a couple of reasons. One, I want to show you it as a synth first. It's a great synth. I'm going to give you my review of it and show you in action. Secondly is to take a look at things like the load down here on the processor and see what kind of efficiency. Now, one of the things that FabFilter boasts about is that they work very hard to make very efficient plugins. And my experience so far on this one is that it is incredibly efficient, uh, adding about 1% on your CPU load. I'm on a native system, Pro Tools HD native, and I'm running uh, 12 gigabytes of RAM. But I'm really not coming against any issues. In fact, I did actually early on, just for the heck of it, instantiate 50 plugins on 50 chats just to see what the load would be and it was happy with that so it's pretty efficient now you get it from FabFilter you can download a 30-day demo to play with and then when you like it and buy it you hit that buy now button but what I love about it is a number of things uh, one of them is the sound and secondly is how intuitive it is to use now if you're not used to synths and not used to programming then there's an amazing array of uh as you can see, presets that they've made. And actually, you know, presets on some uh, synths are pretty hit and miss, but these are pretty good. And they cover a whole multitude of things. Uh, we've got their arpeggios. So just a quick example, so something like this. And we could just scroll through them. So you get the idea anyway, and then you've got everything across two, two huge pads as well. And some pretty mean basses, so the, the vintage ones in particular. And I've had this up against two or three other synths, I won't name any names, but the bottom end on this fab filter is huge, it's amazing. So hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of presets that you can uh, load up. But uh, if you then want to have a go at programming, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to load up a default uh, clean sound here, which is a single oscillator. You've got three oscillators. As you can see, there's a single oscillator there. And if you want to do any adjustments, you could do adjustments straight from here. So you can move your mouse up to change the octaves. And tune it that way as well. Press the Alt key and tap on it, you get back to normal. If you double click on it, you can open it up then do some more detail. We've got three oscillators. So we turn the second one on as well. Let's try to detune one against the other. But instead what you could do as well is you can use unison mode. So uh, if I just close that off again, Come here to unison and use this spread here straight away. Add some delay on it and a filter. Here's the filter here. There's two things you can do with the filters. Again, you can work just in the box here with your mouse. Or you can double click here and open it and go into it in detail.
Then we have an envelope here. The usual attack to key decay and release. So straight away you can see you can get some pretty cool sounds very quickly. Then what you can do as well is one of the great features, and if I just open up this envelope again, I want to get a, a big long sound just, just for a second. Come to my filter again. I can add in a new... No, sorry, not an LFO. I could add it. I'll keep that for a moment because I'm going to use that in a second. In fact, I'll use the LFO instead for the purpose of this experiment. So we can then grab this target and just take it to wherever we want it. So I can use the, I can say I want this frequency here to be controlled by the LFO. And now, so the frequency. could do then as well is change this to its square. And modulate it. So you get the idea anyway. Now we can sync that also with the sequencer. Put this beat on with it now, we should have that in time with the beat. You get the idea anyway. That's pretty cool. So you then have the ability to control anything from MIDI as well. So you can assign MIDI controllers very quickly just using CC MIDI Learn. So for example, if I wanted to control this here from uh, controller on my keyboard, I just I just come to MIDI Learn, just click what I want to do, and just move my controller, and there it is. It's learned now. So if I want to make that a freeform one again. I guess MIDI learn it. There we go. Now what you have with this is some really cool sounds. So what I've done is I've knocked up a song. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hide and make that inactive, knocked up this song. I'm using four instances of the twin in Pro Tools, and I'm going to put my setup, my playback engine, it's at 32, so it's been working at 32. And don't forget, I've got a background application running as well, which is recording the screen and the audio. So if I put that, let's say I was mixing now, 
in a mixed situation. As you can see now, the CPU is going into hardly anything. And let me start turning them on. And you'll see here, look at the CPU down here as I turn them on. And as you can see, hardly anything. And when we start playing them, let me play you this track. So I've got this ARP sound. So I've got, a, I've got an ARP, I've got a bass, I've got a top line, and I've got a pad. So I've got the bass and they're following each other. If you've got a sub, turn it on now, and also put a pair of headphones on if you haven't. Because the bottom end is just huge on these sounds, it's great. But what excites me is the efficiency of these, because if uh, this is what's going on with uh, I'm not sure how much that's got to do with AAX, what it's got to do with RTAS, I'd be interested to to see. But uh, I've just loaded in, as I say, other plugins of a similar type uh, from other manufacturers in RTAS, and they literally didn't go anywhere near the amount of usage. So as I say, I had 50 instances of this, and it wasn't really moving. And then I was getting to about 20, 25 on some very well-known alternative synth plugins. Uh, so it's well worth checking it out. And as I say, also, I've got this lovely uh, pad sound here. You see, the variety of sounds is just amazing. Great sounds. So there we are, one of the first synths in AAX to hit Pro Tools, and it's a great synth. It sounds good, it's easy to use. And actually, the other thing as well, if you uh, hover over stuff, you not only got this stuff appearing, but sometimes when you hover over certain things, you get full help coming up is when you can choose that. You can have big component and interactive help hints that come up and explain how things work. So it's very easy to use. And also there's this lovely widescreen version if you want it. So it's very easy to use. So there's one of those uh, helps popping up now. And it gives you full control there. So it's very easy to use. It sounds great. It's very versatile. It's AAX. And you know, I just, I just think it's great. I just think, and it's, it's not that much money either. So uh, if you're looking for a great synth and you haven't got synths already uh, for Pro Tools or to use in other DAWs, then you can't go wrong with this Twin 2. You know, I'm really loving it and I'm gonna give it my Editor's Choice Award. So there we are. Editor's Choice Award, even the Editor's Choice will match the look of this synth. So download it for 30 days and try it yourself. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you're into synth music and you need to use a synth. And so this is a great showing in AAX Virtual Instruments. It gives me hope for the future as everybody else adopts this for Pro Tools. So check it out and uh, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.